When patients come in for injections or epidurals or transforaminal injections or blocks, they kind of go by a lot of different names. At DISC in our surgery center, we treat all the blocks really like any other surgical patient. The procedures are done in the same operating rooms that we do spine surgery in with the same anesthesia machines and the same OR lights and the same x-ray machines. Everything's the same from the sterility standpoint, um, equipment standpoint, and even the, the way we treat the patients uh, in every way, shape, and form. It may seem overwhelming to patients, but it's really for safety and also for comfort. So while some patients are comfortable getting their injections or their blocks under straight local, meaning I'll, I'll use local anesthesia so that they really don't feel very much pain, often, I'd say more often or most often, patients want some sedation. The whole goal really is to reduce anxiety and reduce pain so that the procedure and the whole experience is very comfortable and isn't something that you're afraid of because you may end up coming back for more. There's been a lot of controversy regarding injectables and particularly steroids because there was a very unfortunate event where there were some contaminated steroids coming out of a particular pharmacy. And although that's an extremely rare event, it's obviously raised everyone's awareness. Uh, Thankfully, we've been fortunate to not have any of the tainted steroid, and um, I don't think it's just happenstance. I think it's due to the, the very excellent due diligence of our uh, nursing staff who meticulously researched the pharmacy that we use. It's been in business for a long time. They have an outstanding track record without any history of infection or contamination. People who come into the office or into the center in pain obviously want to get immediate relief, and while we strive for that, uh, generally the injections have sort of a two peaked effect. For most injections, I'm injecting two substances that are going to hopefully help them. The first is a local anesthetic, a long-acting local anesthetic, which hopefully will provide some immediate relief, but it's going to wear off within six to eight hours. And then the steroid is sort of the second peak, and that usually kicks in within several days and lasts for days to weeks to months or even longer. Often patients will get relief initially the day of the procedure, and then there can be a little lull where the local anesthetic is worn off and the steroid hasn't quite kicked in and then the steroid kicks in several days later and then they feel better.